right, welcome back. So, uh, as promised, this is the first video in the multi-part tuning series that I'm going to have for ballad songs. Now, how this is going to work is we're going to have multiple videos. I think I'll probably do about five, let's say. Um, at least that's the current plan. We'll see how this plays out. Um, covering the various various stages in tuning a ballad song. So, it'll be all the different methods, um, all the different ways you can make your ballad song sound better. I'll, I'll split it up into, so the first video, this video, is going to be about maintenance. Um, just simple things like that anyone can do. Kind of the very basics, before you do any tuning, anything like that, just to make your ballad song sound better and to increase its longevity, how long it lasts, you know. The second video is going to be about, I'll probably do your basic um, bushing tuning there, since a load of people want to know about that. I've already done a video on that, but it was a little outdated and... Um, not many people find it, so I feel like covering that again in a more well-explained video with better editing, better stuff like that, uh, more information showing exactly how a micrometer works and how to use them. I feel like that will be very useful for you guys. Something I didn't cover in the last one, we're going to do washer tuning. Now, lots of people don't really talk about this often, as it's not massively important, it's not very well known, but I find it definitely does help with the sound of the ballad song. It also helps with removing tap in like really finicky ballad songs like uh, this replicant clone for instance which has a, a trainer blade and so the blade is almost as thick as the channel itself and uh, eliminating tap can be really difficult so tuning the bushing, sorry tuning the washers on this can be uh, a way to really help help get rid of tap, help improve the sound um, where bushing tuning may just not be accurate enough. For those methods you'll need this micrometer but I'll talk about them in their own separate videos. I'll do a video on lubricants. I'm using carbon honey for this video because it's my favorite but um, I have a few others which I'll share with you and I'll talk about kind of what explain them a little bit you know what different types of lubricants do to different ballad songs and um, how to loop your ballad song and stuff like that. I mean it's, it's gonna be a basic video but I'll, I'll cover a little bit of how to do it in this video for the maintenance but um, they'll be more in depth and then other tips and tricks I use to make my ballad songs sound better. You may notice this rep clone doesn't have any Zen screws, for instance, and it makes it sound better. But for this video, it will just be maintenance. So I'll be taking apart this Kraken clone, doing some basic maintenance, cleaning it out, oiling it, making sure the washers are orientated correctly. Um, kind of what I do to make sure uh, I get these things sounding as good as possible, and also increasing how long they last. You don't want your wash uh, you don't want your washers wearing out. Uh, it will affect the sound, it will kind of decrease the lifespan and how well it holds its tolerances. So that's the content of this video today. I'll leave links for the other videos when I upload them in the description, but it should be the next few videos in this, in this series. Okay, so for this first section I thought I'd do a, a quick little uh, sound test, show you guys what we're working with. Um, if you saw my previous reel about introducing this video series, you noticed that this was really good tolerances and it sounded great, but I've been beating it the last few days really, you know, dropping it a lot, um, using it, as you do, and it's developed some tap, it's developed some play, it doesn't sound that good, and uh, today we'll be fixing that. So here's what it sounds like now. We have a little bit of tap. It's a little bit muted. The ice pick isn't too bad, but you know, it doesn't have that like vibration sound that we, we really want. Uh, and there's there's some play as well. It's not a lot, but you know, don't expect massive changes in just flipping. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get this uh, tuned up and sounding great. Not tuned up, maintained and sounding great. We won't be doing anything to the bushings, we won't be doing anything to the washers. That is not this video, those will be videos to come. This will just be taking it apart cleaning it out, making sure the washers are done correctly, orientated correctly, since a lot of people mess that up when taking their ballast apart. We're going to oil it, and we're going to tighten it back up, and uh, hopefully get this thing sounding great again. So, first things first, taking it apart. You want a microfiber cloth, just to clean everything off, and uh, to protect your table, or whatever. I've got oil stains all over this, because I don't ever use these properly, but... Uh, Hey ho, you should do that to protect your surface. 
you'll want a driver for whatever size screws you have. These are T8 on the Bally Plus um, cracking clones. Most Bally Plus products come with T8, so uh, I would recommend getting a T8 bit screwdriver for those, especially if you're working on clones. Uh, the Squid products come with T10. You know, just make sure you check which one, buy the right driver. Uh, a good quality driver is very useful. You'll see uh, the cheaper ones that come in the box. Here's one. Uh, they tend to strip really quickly and not the best quality. They'll damage your screws, they'll break. I would not suggest using these. You also can't get much leverage with them. Whereas if you get a good driver like this, it's got a quality end, although this one's slightly worn because I use it so much, sorry, it's out of frame. Um, and then a proper handle to grip will give you a lot better uh, tuning capabilities. You can get it a little bit tighter. You can make sure you don't strip your screws as easily because especially with uh, stuff like the one clones, the, sc the screws are really shit. Bally Plus has improved on this, but you know, Still, we don't want to be stripping the screws here. You want some lubricant? I'm using carbon honey uh, thick, this is. Carbon honey thick? Yeah, carbon honey thick. And um, my favorite, I use it for most of the things. I do have a few others that I'll use for plastic ballast songs, like the chroma here. But um, mostly I use carbon honey, just because, you know, it sounds great. What can you say? Everyone loves it. Have some Loctite here. I will be showing you how to use this in this video. Not on this bow song, since I don't personally use Loctite on my bow songs, which we'll get to that later. I'll talk about that later. Some spare hardware. You don't need it if you're just maintaining it, but maybe if you strip a screw or if you want to replace the silver pivots for gold pivots, for instance, uh, you might want to do that. This video, I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to be dealing with the spare hardware because I don't want to change any of the hardware, but that will be covered in the next video. So taking it apart, it's very simple. For Bally Plus products, you have one-sided screws, so you just have a screw here, and this side's flat. For Squid products, for instance, uh, my Kraken here, you'll have your screws on both sides. If you have a legitimate Squid product, you'll have a Squid Industries logo. These are This is the side that you should take the screws out of. Um, this, however, is a hourglass blade, and so we don't have that, but I know that this is the side that the screws are on. If you build your own knife, you should know that. But anyway, back to taking them out. Make sure you kind of push down and twist to, so you don't strip screws. If you haven't got a bit of pressure applied on there, then um, when you're breaking them free, first off, then uh, they might be at risk of stripping. Now, what I will say is when you take your bars off apart, remember which side is which. Um, I'll keep it the same orientation so I can remember, but I'll have my left hand side here, my right hand side here, the bow song goes in the middle, we got safe on the left, bite on the right, because it rhymes. Push your pivots out, put them on the right sides, pivots out, oh, that one's gonna be tough, isn't it? <sighs> this was difficult last time when I shot this, we'll do that in a second, uh, but handles off, and then washer orientation is really important because you have a smooth side and you have a, a rigid, like a rough side. So you want your smooth side facing inwards. So when you pull the washer off, these ones are a little fiddly. Come on, off you come. You want the smooth side facing up and inwards. And on this side, smooth side, if I can get it off, facing up and inwards. And then your bushing, I usually put left side down. Keeping orientation like this is extremely important because depending on the variation, or depending on uh, the orientation of the washer and the bushing, it can cause your tolerances to be different. You um, you might find if you put your washer around the wrong way, it'll start binding up or it won't sound as good. It won't get your vibrations as well. I'm gonna quickly pause and take this thing out because it's really stuck in there good and I'm not going to be able to get it out on camera, so let me just pause the video and uh, quickly do that. Alright, so now we have that all taken apart. That was a pain in the ass, I won't lie. Um, it didn't want to come out, and that's what you get when you get these clones. They're a little cheaper, aren't machined correctly, and things tend to stick or they're slightly loose. The tolerance is just not as good as the real products, and that's always how it will be. But, on to the cleaning. So. You can either use your own microfiber cloth that you've got at your table, 
but I have another one here because I want to keep the surface clean. What I would say is go through and get all of the oil off of each individual part. We'll do the, uh, the handles first. Sorry, I need, to, I need to work on keeping things in frame for you. I find if you fold it up a few times um, to get a bit thicker and then just work it in, run it through the handles, you'll see you get all of that grime out there. Just try and get rid of all the oil. Same again for the other handle. In and pull it along, just trying to work out as much of that grime as possible. For each of the individual components, we'll do them one by one. The screws aren't gonna have any oil on them, but you know, doesn't help, doesn't hurt to give them a clean. Make sure you make Make sure you have your washer orientated the correct way. You don't want to be flipping this over. Smooth side always faces up. Okay, so now that we have all the oil off the knife, we can work on lubricating it and putting it back together again. So this next bit is important. I would say do one side at a time uh, make sure you keep the orientations correctly. I'll, I'll show you how to figure it out if you've fucked it up and dropped a washer or something like that. I'll show you how to do that. So when putting it back together, you have two different types. You have um, two different types of washer bushing systems. With these Valley Plus clones, the newer ones, the you might have seen when I was taking it apart, the washer goes around the outside of the bushing on a lot of the newer, uh, sorry, on a lot of the older clones, like this rep clone, for instance. The and on legitimate squid products, most other products, only really Valley Plus does this actually, um, you'll find that the washer will sit on top of the bushing. So what I would always recommend is to put in your bushing first. So it was like that, wasn't it? Put in your bushing. Then I would say washers in first and then put it into the, into the handle. A lot of people do it the other way around, but I find that this helps especially if you have the old method, uh, the old or standard uh, washer setup. So you want smooth side on the inside, like this. Line that up. Smooth side on the inside, line that up. And then put your handle on, so slide it on. Sometimes it's a little bit wriggly, but you can usually get it lined up pretty easily. When you're doing standard wash washers and not ones that sit around the side of the bushing, you'll have to pinch those with your fingers and then slide it in. It's it can be difficult at times, especially with uh, stuff like the old Valley Plus Krakens, the life blades were really tight tolerances. It just takes a little bit of uh, practice and fiddling. It can be kind of annoying, but uh, that is what it is. Pivot then goes in on the opposite side because that's how we had it orientated and through, and then screw in, oh my days, that's tight, and screw it up. I'm not going to do it all the way yet, because I haven't lubricated it yet, so we'll just leave those slightly loose, they'll have tap, but we'll do the other side now. Pushing in, washer in, smooth side facing towards the blade. Now let's say you drop this, you didn't know which side the smooth side was. Uh, one way that helps to feel is if you put it between your finger and your thumb and you just rub, one side will catch on your finger and one side will move freely. You can see there my thumb is sliding more over the washer than the washer is sliding over my, fing my uh, pointer finger. Another way you can tell is if you hold it and you rub your thumb down the outside, that's got a rough edge on it. Whereas if I go on this side, it can feel slightly more rounded and that's just how they stamp them out in the factory. The rounded side is the smoother side. You can feel it, it takes a little, you know, uh, what do you call it? Getting used to, I guess. Uh, it takes a little time to be able to figure it out, but uh, you'll work it out, I'm sure. Smooth side facing inwards and then the handle on. Pinch those washers together so they don't move around. And then pave it through the back and screw in. Now, when you have standard valve songs and not these Valley Plus ones that have the washer around the outside of the bushing, 
Sometimes it can be a little finicky to line everything up. Um, I would suggest sticking your screwdriver through the, uh, the area and then wriggling it around like that. I'll show you on, okay, I'll show you on this Kraken. Wrong side. Where the hell did that screw go? There it is. So when you're putting them back together after you've taken them apart, let's say you're taking them off, pinch together. Where the fuck are the other washers? There you go. Pinch together the washers, slide the handle on, stick the screwdriver through like that, give a little wriggle around, make sure everything's lined up. Pivot through, it takes a little bit of wriggling, but just wriggle it around, it'll get the pivot in there. And then screw in and screw it up again. This is another T10 driver, what the fuck am I doing? Get my T10 driver out, that'll actually work properly. There we go. Back to this. So you've done them up, not fully tightened. They're still slightly loose. You'll be really tappy, but having it slightly looser helps the oil to get in easier. Just unscrew your oil, your bar song lubricant. Open it. I always say do open position and then a drop on the top of every single handle between the blade and the handle. So squeeze out a drop there drop there, one there, and one there. Those ones aren't really worked in properly. Let me just, there we go. You'll then need to work it around a bit. And then tighten them up. When you're tightening, push down, uh, get force in there. It will help so you don't strip it. Push down and crank. Um, you don't want to crank it too tight because uh, then you'll stop damaging washers, especially on the older models. But just get it till it doesn't really want to go anymore because you don't want to strip, start stripping screws. And there we go, back to no tap. sounding good again. Get a few ice pick tests in there. Okay, so I wasn't really happy with the uh, sound test that I gave at the end of that first demonstration, so I worked the oil in a little bit more. It takes a little time. I've just done it for five minutes. That's all it really takes, I guess. Um, but not something I can show in that whole video, you know, it takes a little while to, of just flipping to work the oil in, but it does get to sound better over time. This is what it sounds like now. And this is just the oil getting right deep into those bushings, because you know we cleaned everything out. Just giving it time to work, uh, to get the oil worked in, uh, really helps. Now you don't need to do this every time you um, want to just maintain your bow song. If you do, if you just put fresh oil on every few days when it starts to sound dry, um, that should be enough. It's more, if everything gets gunked up all the time, that's when I would suggest taking it apart and cleaning it, but this isn't something you should be doing every few days. For sure, I usually clean my bow songs maybe once, once every two weeks. But yeah, um, it just depends on how much you flip them really and uh, what oils you're using. Some last longer than others. Carbon honey usually lasts a few days between uh, adding more. So yeah, starting to sound really good now. The more you flip it, the uh, more the, the oil and the uh, lubricant gets worked into the pivots. Okay, and so now for the Loctite, since uh, a lot of people ask me about this. I don't want to put it on this bow song because I know that I'm going to be taking it apart a lot and, you know, fiddling around with it like I do with all my bow songs. So, 
Loctite really is only a solution if you never want to take it apart again, if you just want it to hold its tolerances and sit how you set it. You know, never fiddle with anything again. And while that is good and a lot of people do want that, I kind of play around with my battle songs a bit too much to uh, to warrant putting this stuff on. It can it can be a right pain in the ass, so I would say only do it as a last resort if your screws keep coming out and you just really don't want to tighten it up every single time. I'm going to be using it on this old Nautilus clone by the one, purely because I don't flip this thing at all and I don't really care about it. And so I'll show you how to put Loctite on. It's really simple. All you'll need is take your screw out. I don't think this bottle's open yet. They come sealed off at the top. Just take a pair of scissors, cut the top off. There we go. And then uh, squeeze out a very small dollop onto your uh, screw. Now this stuff's really strong, so you really don't need much. Tiny little drop on your screw. And this stuff gets everywhere, so try not to put it, you know, on your clothes and whatnot. And then stick your screw into the pivot and get it tightened up again. It's really that simple. All you need is one drop. Tighten it all the way off. There we go. So have it how you want. Make sure your your swing's okay before you do that, because uh, you know you don't want lock tight it with bad tolerances. But then you have to sit and leave that for 24 hours. People say, oh, do I really need to wait 24 hours? The longer you leave it, the better it is. I would say leave it for leave it for 48 hours, you know? Three days if you really want to. Just make sure that stuff is set. I would say anything less than 24 hours, don't do, because you just don't want it coming out again and having to put more on. It's a pain in the ass. Just make sure you leave it to set. Do not flip it. Do not touch it. Put it in your drawer. Forget about it for 24 hours at least. Let it dry. Then that will uh, that screw will be stuck in place. You can take them off. It's a little bit of effort. Using heat stuff like that will help uh, to break it when you decide you do want to take your screws out. But uh, I would only use this as a last ditch method. If your body screws for your rep, for instance, are always coming out like these ones here, and you know you're not going to take your rep apart, uh, maybe you can body, maybe you can do these ones. But I would say only really use it as a last resort. I personally do not like using Loctite because um, I know the pain and the troubles of trying to get loctite screws out. But um, that's all I have to really say on that. It's really easy to use, but uh, I wouldn't really recommend it. So leave a like if you enjoyed, uh, if it's helped you out. I will do other videos on uh, washers, bushings, uh, lubricants, things like that. Um, in, I think it's going to be a five part series now, we'll see, um, detailing how I make my life sound good, how I maintain their tolerances, how I, you know, uh, fix up clones essentially, since a lot of my clones are much nicer than how they come out of the box. But I uh, hope this helped and I'll be seeing you.